it's Jessie V and what do you think of my new background? I am absolutely in love with it and I thought I loved the last one but this one? I feel like it's the perfect mixture of like creepy but beautiful. It's like an enchanted forest behind me or something. And I know it probably looks like it's upside down because trees are coming from over my head, but actually the entire backdrop in a circle has trees. So like trees are also coming up here and sideways. And so like, it's not upside down. It's just like a circular tree background, but I adore it. I feel like it fits my channel theme so well, like mysterious and weird. So I really hope you guys, <clears throat> I am losing my voice. I hope you guys really like this one as well because it is going to one of you guys at the end of February. So because we just finished with this background, that means, hold on, that means that the one before this is going to somebody. So the winner of this pretty odd background is my sweet creation. So congrats girl, you subscribed to my vlog channel and and you commented your favorite part of a video and so you win this and I did message you so check your DMs and uh, yeah congratulations this is going to you this panic at the disco goes to you but thank you so much to all of you who entered and don't worry you might be able to win this one as well the way you enter is pretty much the same so go subscribe to vlogs if you're already subscribed there don't worry you're good that's one step done for you already and the second step just like the last one is go to the video titled a bulldog fashion show and comment your favorite outfit outfit that my dog Winnie is wearing. And once you do those two steps, you are entered. Well, yeah, let's carry on with the video. So as you can tell, this is yet another series that I'm doing. I feel like for 2019, I want to have a bunch of different series that I can concentrate on. And I love having different intros for them all. I just feel like it's just so fun and so different. And I really want to revamp my channel this year. And I think this is a great way to do that. So this series is called It's Near You, which I think is already a very ominous, mysterious title and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by going through every single state and talking about the most paranormal parts of those states so haunted houses creepy urban legends and once I've gone through all of the states I will move on to the rest of the world Canada UK literally everywhere that you guys are it will eventually be mentioned so it's kind of cool because you get to tune in every week and see if the video is gonna be about where you are so I just think I just think it's a really cool concept let me know what you guys think but today we are starting off with Alabama. I don't know if I'm going to be going in like alphabetical order, but this is this is the first one. So this video did require a lot of research, but I learned a lot about the different paranormal locations in Alabama and it's it's intriguing. So these are not gonna be in any particular order. We're just gonna go through them and it's gonna get creepy up in here. Okay, so the first place we're gonna be talking about is the Tutwiler Hotel. The Tutwiler Hotel was opened in 1914 with a major investment from Major Tutwiler. Guests as well as staff in the hotel have so many ghost stories to tell. The most notable was from a bartender who used to work at the hotel. He had so many paranormal experiences that all happened in 1994. The lights in the bar were left on for a week after closing time and the boss got quite angry with him, especially because he was new and didn't seem to be following the guidelines. So he would always turn the lights off at closing time, but they would constantly turn on again by themselves. So after turning off the lights four times, he finally left to go home. Imagine how frustrating that would be. Like your boss is telling you, hey, make sure the lights are off. And every time you do, they just like turn back on. The next day, the manager once again angrily asked why the lights were on. Imagine being that manager, you hire this new guy and he just won't follow any instructions. But little do you know that it's literally not his fault at all. So the bartender tried to explain this to the manager, but he would just not believe him. This happened for five nights in a row. And on the sixth night, the manager called the bartender and told him to come to work immediately. When he got there, there was a complete multi-course meal with candles and a bottle of wine. So literally when the manager went to open the bar in the morning. There was a whole table set up for an entire meal. Many people believe that it was the ghost of Tutwiler, for which the hotel was named after. So in order to stop him from making a mess again, he would call out Tutwiler each night to tell him good evening and not to make a mess. And since they've been doing that, they haven't had any more paranormal
paranormal activity. Isn't that crazy? You literally have to tell the ghost good evening or he'll make a mess. And there's also a ghost there that people call the knocker, which is a freaky name as it is. Several guests have reported loud, rapid knocks on their room door, only for them to quickly jump and open it to see nobody standing there. This ghost is known as the knocker. It is believed to be a male spirit because he wakes women up with his knocking during the night. I don't know how that would make him be a male ghost per se, which is interesting. But oh my gosh, imagine being at this hotel and just hearing like do 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 like in the middle of the night. No. Okay, the next place we're gonna talk about is Bear Creek Swamp in Prattville. Swamps are usually pretty creepy at the best of times, but Bear Creek Swamp specifically has a large number of creepy stories to tell. There have been sightings of phantom cars, strange orbs flying around, along with a four foot tall strange apparition that appears in front of cars all of a sudden. Like imagine just driving by this swamp and all of a sudden this figure disappears in front of your car. People try their best not to pass the swamp after dark. Bear Creek Swamp is also said to be haunted by the ghost of a mother in search of her lost child. There is also an urban legend that says if you go to this swamp and say we have your baby three times she'll come and attack you. And I feel like that's so mean like you're just there taunting her. And what's even weirder than all of these things is that 21 porcelain dolls were found mounted on the top of stakes in the middle of the swamp. That was back in 2014 and to this day nobody knows how they got there. I mean this place is already creepy and to add all of these mysterious porcelain dolls in the middle of the swamp? What? How did they get there? Like if someone's just playing a joke they would have had to have swam and walked through all of that gross water to put those dolls there. Like how messed up do you have to be? The next place we're gonna talk about is the Sloss Furnaces and this is located in Birmingham, Alabama. Between the years of 1882 to 1971, the Sloss Furnaces and its employees were turning coal and ore into steel. It also has a reputation as being one of the most haunted locations in Alabama and is listed as the top 100 places in the world for paranormal activity. That is pretty significant. You've got to think about all of the millions of places you can go around the world and this place is in the top 100 ever. There are over 100 well-known stories of ghost encounters that have happened there. And through my research, I found out that it's a very hazardous place to work. Employees would constantly take dangerous risks in order to speed up production, so many of them lost their lives. And that's why so many people believe that these workers' spirits still linger there. Workers continuously complained of an unnatural presence in the work site. And some even complained about being pushed from behind or being told by a mysterious voice to get back to work. Three supervisors were even found unconscious and locked in a small boiler room. When they were finally let out, they all had the same story about a mysterious burned man who shouted at them to push more steel and then locked them away. Some say it's their mysterious boss who just disappeared one day, but today the furnaces are actually a historic monument. So there's daytime and nighttime tours that still go on there if you ever want to go and check it out. I know that I would if I was there. The next place is the Redmont Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. This is Birmingham's oldest and most historic hotel, and it also has a very haunted past. Apparently the ghost of a woman in white who passed away in the hotel has been seen on the ninth floor. Additionally, the ghost of a former owner named Clifford Stiles is said to walk the halls. People have also seen a very small ghost dog wandering around the hotel, which I find very interesting. Whenever I hear about like ghost pets, I'm so intrigued. But the most famous ghost of the hotel is that of a famous singer named Hank Williams, who has been seen in the room he stayed in right before his death. It is rumored to be Suite 301, but if you ask employees there, they won't actually tell you for sure. Strange occurrences such as the opening of doors and movement of furniture or baggage have also been reported by guests. I feel like wherever I research, there are so many haunted hotels and that's such a popular thing. Like even where I live now, there are more haunted hotels than any other haunted locations. The next place is the Drish House, and I hope I say this right, but it's in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I feel like I'm gonna butcher so many of these names, so please forgive me. The Drish House has officially been named the most haunted place in Alabama. It was built in 1937 by Dr. John R. Drish over a 450 acre plantation. But unfortunately, Dr. Drish, who loved gambling and drinking, passed away in 1867 from falling down a stairway while drunk. His wife, Sarah, suddenly became so obsessed about planning his funeral, so much so that it became this huge elaborate event. 
She even kept the candles from his funeral with the intense hope that they would be used at her own funeral. So she basically wanted her funeral to be the exact same as her husband's. But when she passed away in 1884, her family searched the house endlessly to find the candles, but they could not. This is said to have angered Sarah so much that she has come back to haunt the house. It's kind of a sad story because I feel like it's not really her family's fault. Her family literally tried to find these candles and could not. So she's a very angry soul and spirit who just lingers there because her funeral wasn't the same as her husband's. People say that she was the one who caused a fire in the third story tower by lighting the candles. Sometimes it will even just look like the third floor is on fire through the windows, but whenever firemen arrive, there's absolutely nothing. So for so many years, the Drish house was just empty. No one ever went there, but apparently in 2015, it was totally remade. By 2016, the new owner had restored the estate and opened it up to the public as a historical and cultural place of interest. And so now you can actually rent out the place for like a corporate event, a party, or even a wedding. So if you want to have like a paranormal wedding, you could literally have one there. The next place we're going to talk about is the old Bryce Hospital. It is in Northport, Alabama. Bryce Hospital was a former insane asylum and had a reputation for treating its patients horribly, even verging on torture. And unfortunately, that was very common about insane asylums. People were never treated properly. It was built in the 1850s and opened in 1861. Visitors claimed to feel hot and cold spots and see items moving of their own accord and hear ghostly sounds and footsteps. Some have even seen a tail of a doctor's coat going through the hallway. There have been screams, scuffling of feet, doors opening and closing, just your usual paranormal stuff. There was this girl named April Moody who visited the hospital with a couple of her friends and here's what she had to say about her experience. It is by far the creepiest place I have ever been and I have been to many scary places. We would turn off the lights from time to time to see if anything would happen. One time we did this and my friend heard a noise. At the same time, I saw something move. We then saw a fresh footprint on the floor and when we turned off the lights, we both thought we heard a small child running towards us. We turned the light back on and didn't see anything. That is so creepy and I feel like people are so extremely brave. Like I could never go to an old hospital like this and turn all of the lights off and just sit there and listen. And it's so cool that people can. Like I'm pretty sure Brittany 44 would love to do that, which is awesome, but I feel like I'm just so, I'm so terrified. The next place is the Gaines Ridge Dinner Club. And this is in Camden, Alabama. The Gaines Ridge Dinner Club has been named the most haunted restaurant in Alabama. The popular restaurant is located in an 1820s antebellum home and is well known for its family of ghosts. Several guests have reported hearing screaming, the smell of pipe smoke. They've seen a floating woman in the windows, the cries of babies, and apparitions in mirrors of a tall bearded man in black. So people have said that while they're like in the bathroom or like checking their hair in a mirror, they'll look behind them in the mirror and there that guy will be. The owner reports her experience with the ghost as ghost truths instead of ghost stories because she believes completely that these things happened to her. She says she heard the mysterious scream of a co-worker who denied calling out to her even though they both heard the yelling. The last place we're going to talk about is the Sweetwater Mansion located in Florence, Alabama. There are many stories about various paranormal activities that are said to take place in the mansion. Countless apparitions have reportedly been seen in the grounds. There's a story of a caretaker who claimed to have seen a casket with the body of a Confederate soldier lying in one of the downstairs rooms. And it quickly disappeared when she went to go tell somebody about what she saw. There's also a room in the house that constantly locks women inside of it. One of the mansion's caretakers named Amay Letty Region was so terrified of her experience being locked in there one day that she would only live in two rooms in the mansion and refuse to go anywhere else. And I don't blame her. Imagine just like taking care of the room, making the bed, and suddenly the door just locks and you can't get out. I would never go in there again. The house also has a mysterious area which is called the secret room. It has no door and can only be accessed through a small interior window. And no one knows what the purpose of that room is. Like why is it there? No one can figure it out. What's the point of a room that you can't easily access? Investigators have also captured numerous photographs documenting these strange anomalies. One photograph was that of a distinct shape of a Civil War soldier standing outside of the property one evening. There have also been a ton of paranormal shows that have gone to investigate there and they've caught a lot of stuff on camera. One time even a ceiling tile threw itself across the room. So those are all of the haunted locations in Alabama that I'm going to be talking about today. There are numerous others. These are just the top ones that I could find.
mind. If there's anyone that I didn't mention, definitely comment it down below. And if you live there, let me know if you've ever been to one of these places before. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this series. I cannot wait to make more. It's so interesting to look up and just to talk about. So yeah, don't forget to apply to win this backdrop behind me. And I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!